edition Excelsior Forum and Profiles, a special report on the coronavirus. Everybody's been hearing so much about it. Uh, we're going to try to get to some of the truths about what's going on with this and better inform you. And of course, back with us this time, Dr. Sanjay Godwani. So great to have you back. Thanks a lot, Larry. Excited, excited, man. I, we got a lot stuff. to talk about, got a lot to talk about today. A lot of people are scared, um, a lot of panic going on. Now, you as a rheumatologist, why would you be so interested in the coronavirus? Yeah, so, you know, rheumatology is, is a wonderful field, and it, it involves, like, the whole system. A lot of the conditions we treat, um, you know, rheumatology is a, is a field that's devoted to, like, musculoskeletal systems, autoimmune diseases, and, and we use a lot of medications to suppress the immune system uh, because what the immune system is doing is causing these arthritis, lupus, and, and other things that are out there. Uh, so it, it it's struck me in, like, a particular manner because... A lot of my patients are on medications. And over the last couple of weeks with the outbreak going on and more and more cases coming out every day, I'm getting questions constantly about what do we do, what shouldn't we do, what should we wear, should we wear masks, should we wear gloves? Uh, so, so people are, are worried. And I, I think what we want to do today is just clarify a few things and just educate people. Uh, I, one of my main goals as a rheumatologist is not to just diagnose and treat, but education. Uh, teaching people what the virus is, how it's transmitted, how to protect yourself, and that's what we're doing today. And you and your team are also known as great detectives because when you're a rheumatologist, right. you right. have to go through all this information. That's... We've mentioned this on a previous show. Right. Um, but let's start off, what exactly is the coronavirus? So, so I think this is important for people to know, right? A coronavirus, is, it's a virus, right? And, and there's a, a million different viruses. Of course, the most common being influenza or the flu. And viruses change, right? And that's why there's a new flu shot, a new flu vaccine every single season because, you know, the scientists try to predict what kind of strains or variety would be the most prominent. Uh, the coronavirus, we'll show a picture of it. It's a virus and it has little spokes on it so it appears like a crown. And this virus has been around for as long as we can know, right? What's different about this particular virus, it's, it's called a novel coronavirus. And, and what that means, it's a new strain that hasn't been out there before. And some of these people, you know, some of the people might not know this, but like this virus has actually caused a few epidemics and, and scares in the past. There's been a virus known as severe acute respiratory syndrome that was out in around 2002, 2003, which was a strain of the coronavirus. Now, was that like SARS or the bird flu? It was flow? SARS, it was SARS, exactly, SARS. And they called it SARS-CoV, SARS coronavirus. And it, essentially it was similar to this coronavirus, a lot of respiratory, acute respiratory symptoms. And then in 2012, there was another outbreak called MERS, Middle East Respiratory Syndrome. And, and, you know, those viruses were, thank God, contained and they did get out to multiple countries, affected a lot of people, caused, you know, a significant amount of death. However, this novel coronavirus, which we have out now, has, you know, currently over almost 100,000 cases. And it's the number of deaths has surpassed both of those. Uh, and so that's why the the buzz and the acuity and and the tension is growing because we don't know what can or cannot happen. 
And with this novel coronavirus, it's actually the virus itself is being called SARS-CoV-2, like a second variant of that SARS virus. Now, if you get coronavirus or this SARS-CoV-2 is called COVID, coronavirus disease, 19 for the year that it was initially yeah, outbroken in December, late uh, in China. Yeah. So, so that's what COVID-19 stands for. The virus itself is called SARS-CoV-2 currently. Yeah. Now, we get back to the different types of flu. Now, uh, when you get your flu shot, you get a type A or right. a type B. Right. What has happened this year also is we've had these substrains, they're called. Right. Substrains of B and substrains of A. Yeah. And these are usually weather-related because what happens is B will drop out uh, when it starts getting cold, and then A becomes prevalent. Yeah. Because of the warm winter we've had up here, B stayed prevalent for a long time, and now we just flipped over to A, I think, back in January. Now, with the coronavirus, is is this like a substrain of the original, or is this like new and it's improved? A, it's a new strain that has not been available. You know, it, it has not available, but never been out before. And that's why it's spreading out, because we had a hard time detecting it uh, and now that we know how to test for it and, and diagnose it, but you know what the problem with these viruses is? Like all viruses do the same thing, right? They give you a fever, they give you some cough, sneezing, respiratory symptoms, flu-like symptoms, like some, some headaches, maybe some body aches. And it's difficult to say what's what. You know, it's difficult to say what's what. And, and that's the reason why it's coming out um, and some, some patients may not know that they have it but it's important to know who's at risk. It's important to know what, what these areas are that are endemic, of course, China, Italy, uh, Iran, uh, you know, travel to these areas, bringing it back, to, and, and you know, obviously around the globe, around the globe. Because traveling is so prevalent now. Right, but before, right. Before, you know, yeah. even more so. But um, how, for everybody that's out there, we've been hearing so many different stories, how is it transmitted? Right, so, so this is really important. It, it's transmitted through respiratory droplets. And, and you might be thinking like, what's a respiratory droplet, right? So when you cough or you sneeze, you're, you're releasing uh, a lot of the mucus in your, in your oral cavity, your nasal cavity, uh, like secretions, body secretions Wait. that are coming out of the mouth. So that is the number one way that it is transmitted. And this is where, really where the virus is living in you. In your respiratory in symptoms. In your respiratory right, symptoms. Right. And, and then the other way you can transmit this virus is <clears throat> if you sneeze on a table, you, you know, you wipe your nose, you, you, touch, you touch something. Uh, so so it, touching that surface and, and then touching yourself, that could also transmit the virus. Now, you know, they, they say close contact. Like, what does close contact mean, Right. Close contact, according to the, to the World Health Organization and the CDC, when you sneeze, your droplets can travel up to six feet. So close contact would be like having a conversation like we're having now. I'm not going to sneeze on you. Okay. Uh, but like, you know, if, if somebody's, if you're having a conversation within that six feet of a distance, uh, you know, if they're sneezing, you know, even when you're talking, sometimes you're releasing droplets. Right. You know, like. You know, you're getting some droplets yeah, out there. Yeah, because it's a natural instinct. Your mouth is saliva. Yeah. Okay, so it's keeping your mouth wet. Uh, so that right now is the way that it is transmitted. Now, initially, the source of the coronavirus itself, it originates as its source in animals. Uh, majority are bats. Mm -hmm. uh, now, this outbreak that broke out in Wuhan, China, um, th there was a, a, a very busy market, it got out to some people there, and, and now it transmitted all throughout China. And then December 31st, 2019 is when, uh, when China actually officially announced it to, to the world that there's been a major outbreak and it's causing a lot of symptoms. Um, and, and now that person-to-person -person contact has, has spread drastically. And the first case diagnosed in the U.S. was in Washington State uh, in early January to mid-January. Um, of, the, of, a, of a patient who had traveled, a person who had traveled to Wuhan, China to see some family, came back, developed these headaches, fevers, respiratory symptoms, flu-like illnesses, 
seeing the outbreak firsthand, uh, you know, brought it to our attention. Now, just to make a clarification, so people watching the show are not going to panic and yeah. be paranoid, because right. we want to educate, not scare. That's, a, that's a, absolutely what and we want to do. The target groups that this virus seems to be going after is people with cancer, right? Uh, people with extreme diabetes, right? Um, the elderly, right? People with previous respiratory illnesses, yeah. Uh, but also. Uh, Pregnant women and nursing women have to watch out for this too, right? Yeah. So, I mean, the main question is, again, who's at risk? And it's not, it's not so that the virus is particularly targeting these specific individuals, because anybody can get it, right. right? Now, majority of the time, any virus, including the coronavirus, flu, you name it, majority of the time, it's a virus. It passes, right? You get these body aches, you know, when somebody has the flu, they're, they're in bed for a few days, <clears throat> they get better and so on and so forth, and it, and it passes. So this virus is no different. It can target anybody, but the people who are at risk are people, like you mentioned, with chronic conditions, uh, such as immunosuppressive states, like people with cancer undergoing treatments. Now, they need the treatments for these cancers, obviously, right? right. They need the treatments for their underlying arthritis or autoimmune conditions. And you're right, what we want to do is we want to educate people because if you're out there with underlying conditions, you have to be cautious, right? If you're, if you're undergoing treatment for your chemotherapy, if you're undergoing treatment for your arthritis or autoimmune conditions, like asthmatics, right? They can flare very easily. Smokers who have COPD, uh, people with diabetes like you mentioned, and people who are, a lot of people are on prednisone. You know, so more than like 20 milligrams of prednisone a day, you are considered immunocompromised. You know, other people like, uh, you know, as far as, um, you know, people with like MS, uh, people who have other conditions, including kidney problems, heart disease, they're also considered high risk patients. Um, so we want to let you guys know if you, a family member, a loved one, anybody, even a neighbor, who, who, whoever you know, uh, has these conditions, it's important to discuss with them, like, you know, try to avoid large crowds, you know, try to avoid going into areas that you know people are sick. And, and, and again, that education is what's key and clutch. So those groups of people are at higher risk, but again, the virus can target everybody. For the most part, it passes, uh, you know, and you mentioned the pregnant women and, and the nursing mothers. So, so far, there has not been any vertical transmission, meaning, uh, there, you know, again, we don't have that much data as of right, right now. We'll have to follow up and get more numbers. But, you know, like a few years ago, there was the Zika virus. Right. Right. You remember that? Yeah, we did a show and, on that. Yeah. And, and that actually did cause vertical transmission and caused harm to the fetus like birth defects. Right, the heads were coming out smaller on the babies and everything like that. Yeah, so, so right now there are no cases that have linked coronavirus or COVID-19 to be transmitted to mothers, I mean, to, to their, from mothers to the infants, to the babies. Yeah, the big question now, and I know we, we're gonna be hearing a lot of this, what are the signs and symptoms? Now, a lot of people have said, it's just like getting the flu. Yeah. Okay. And for people who have had their flu shots right. and are taking care of themselves and they're getting this feeling, yeah. that might be something to worry about. You know, another thing is that you, you mentioned a good point about the flu shot, right? Like, yes, the flu shot is supposed to protect you. It, it does not guarantee 100% right. that you will not get the flu. Uh, the same thing goes with the coronavirus, right? There's no vaccine. There's no treatments as we, as we know now, which we'll, we'll discuss in a few minutes. Uh, however, th the signs and symptoms are like the flu, right? Like headaches, body aches, uh, fevers, right? Uh, the fevers can occur. And, and before we get into that, we should, we should mention something about an incubation period. Yeah, right? that's going to be my next question. Yeah, so, so let's say you're, you know, being aware of who's traveled again to these endemic areas. You know, if you've been around somebody that has traveled or you've been around somebody who has been ill, it could take an average of five to seven days to incubate. Now, what that means is, let's say we're having this conversation now, 
I, I coughed on you, I sneezed on you, you, you touched some surface that had some droplets on it, you're not going to notice anything right away. It, right. it could be as early as two days and as late as 14 days. Mm -hmm. And right now the recommendation is that, that someone has been exposed, that you do stay away for about 14 days, you stay quarantined, right. and you kind of like stay alone, put yourself in the house. Uh, of course, if you're having fevers, and the signs are like, you know, fevers, body aches, um, cough, respiratory symptoms. The chills. Night sweats. Um, you know, there have been some patients who've reported some GI concerns, like diarrhea. Mm -hmm. Um, actually, some stool specimens have also tested positive for the COVID-19 virus. Um, so those are not common. Um, you know, uh, other things can happen as well, like fatigue, like just feeling run down. Uh, and those are the most common signs and symptoms. Yeah, so you're going to basically know something's not right. It's not going to be like, oh, I just have a cold. It's going to be right, right. It's going to be an onset of a bunch yeah. of other symptoms. But we just don't and, want everybody out there to worry and, and say, look, I have a, I have a fever now. Now I have the coronavirus. So I'm going to go to the ER. You know, like I'm going to rush to the ER. I'm going to run to the doctor's office. Uh, another key thing right now we have to to counsel people on is like, if you have been exposed or think you have been exposed, especially quarantine. if you've traveled, like obviously stay away from others protect yourself for that incubation period, right? Now, let's say you start developing fevers, chills, these things, respiratory symptoms. It's important for you guys to not rush to the ER, right? Because what's going to happen? Let's say you were exposed to it, right? You're going to go into the ER and expose everybody into the ER right. with it as well. So the most important thing to do is call your healthcare provider, explain your situation that you know, I might have been exposed. If you have not been exposed or around anybody, it could just be a regular virus. It could right. be the flu, it could be anything. But at this time, it's advisable because we want our patients, we want everybody out there to be safe, secure. Call your healthcare provider, call the ER, call someone ahead of time, even emergency responders, because healthcare providers are at risk. Right. Right. Because because think about what could happen. Exactly. If they if they get infected, the healthcare workers, which are our first line of defense. Yeah. They really need to be protected the most. Right. Because they are going to be dealing with these people as they're coming into the hospitals, they're coming into the doctor's office, and if you're exposing other people who are in there for different ailments, let's say they're getting their diabetic medicine or they're checking their, their blood from cancer therapy or something like that, you're exposing these people to, you know, a, a high danger. Yeah, and then the other, you know, we have to understand the magnitude, right? Because if we go into, if you go into the ER or, or anybody's office and so on and so forth, and let's say they get, the, everything has to get shut down. Right. Now we're out doctors, we're out nurses, we're out staff. We're out hospitals. And we're out of hospitals. And we're also putting other patients in hospitals, maybe patients getting chemo, maybe patients are sick with other reasons. They're the high-risk patients. Right. So now we may expose them. Right. Uh, so if you do have to go to the ER or your doctor's office and you feel that you may have a virus, coronavirus, flu, whatever the case may be, right now it's important, call ahead wear a mask properly, uh, and maybe we'll just try to demonstrate that or show some pictures of how to actually wear a mask, because we've, I mean, I've been seeing people wearing a mask that are down in their neck. Yeah. Like, you have to put the mask on above the ear, below the ear, and pinch the nose, right? right? You, you can't leave your nose out, you can't leave it open on the sides. You want to isolate your respiratory secretions that are in your mouth and your nose. Right. Uh, from spreading to others, right? Right. So you're not really going around and wearing a mask thinking you're going to protect your input, okay, from this, unless yeah. you're wearing an yeah. NR19 or something, specialty mask. Right. Um, you're not. But what you're going to do is by having that mask, you're going to stop it from infecting others from coming out. And of that's mask. most important. So we don't want to put people in a state of panic to, to tell everybody, like, go out, get masks, and wear them everywhere you go, because that's not what we want to put out there right now, right? Right now, if you're sick, if you have respiratory symptoms, whether it's a, a virus or not, uh, you know, you should wear a mask, but not everybody needs to wear one at this time. Right, the next thing will be, we've been hearing about the tests, 
Um, the test kits that were going out were no good. These new test kits are coming out. They're very much, much better than the other ones can detect the virus a lot quicker, a lot faster. Yeah, so, so there are tests available, and it's called the real-time PCR, all right? That's the way to test for this. You, you take some secretions similar to what you would do for other viruses, and, and now the kits are becoming more readily available. Uh, and here's the other situation, Larry, right? Like, <coughs> with these tests, we have the test, right? The government, uh, the World Health Organization, the CDC is getting more and more access to these tests, and we're going to test more people. And if we test more people, we're going to get more cases. Right. right? That's just the numbers. It's, it's a fact, right? And it's better to know if these people have it than, like, they've already released some people, and then a, a week later, they came down with it, right? Right. So that's the important thing, right, is that incubation period. is that period, like, if you have been diagnosed with something, stay home. Don't, like, you know, don't go to work. You know, don't infect your family members. Try and stay in an isolated area till your symptoms resolve and you, you get back to feeling better. For, for the most part, for the most part, a lot of people respond well, you know? A lot of people respond well. Now there's been over, you know, 3,000 something deaths. And again, this is because the, the patients that are the most sickest have been getting are, it. are getting it and it's hard for their body to fight it off, right? It's kind of like your immune system works in incredible ways. You're recruiting your immune system to create antibodies to help right. fight this infection off. And it's like the first thing you would do is let's say there's a, there's a problem, you call 911, right? Like, hey, like, you know, somebody's breaking into my house, I need some help. So 911 right. comes right away. Right. But now when the situation escalates, our immune system tries to get more backup. Mm -hmm. Like they, they call the SWAT team. Right. Like let's get more manpower in. And it takes time for the immune system to develop those troops to help fight the infection. Just like it takes the virus time to develop before you show symptoms. Exactly. Because what uh, this does is it apparently uh, it multiplies, it attaches to a cell, and then it, it breeds like that and goes on and on. But uh, before we uh, wrap up, because we're almost out of time, how is it treated? Now, we know there's no cure. Right. At, as of this time, there's no cure. Right. They are working right. on something. Right. We don't know if it'll be a year, it'll be December, it, when it'll be gap. But um, they have shown that there is some promises of, of treating the symptoms and yeah. not treating the, yeah. the virus itself. You, you know, there's, there's ways of treating, right now it's supportive care, right? right? It's organ-based care, so like, let's just say if the virus is affecting your lungs, we try to give you some treatments for your breathing, give you some oxygen, hydration is really important. There are some treatments out there that are being investigated, uh, nothing has been approved yet, but there are a couple of antiviral medications that have been used uh, just as experiments and trials, and, and those studies are ongoing. Um, but the key is hydration, right? The key is to stay hydrated. And, and the other thing I'd like to tell people before we, you know, I know there's a lot to talk about, um, but how to be prepared. Like, what should we do, right? Uh, hand washing is really important, right? Proper hand washing for at least 20 seconds in between your, between your fingers and between your nails at least 20 seconds with soap and water is the best. The more you wash your hands, the safer you will be because it'll be less likely that you shake someone's hand or give them a high five to transmit something, right? Good hygiene, getting rest, getting sleep, making sure your body's well rested, or using alcohol, right? Hand sanitizer, and it has to have at least 60%, 60% um, alcohol in it. So make sure you guys have some of that. Uh, I, again, I, you know, I've told all of my office staff already, like just you know, constantly wiping down surfaces, making sure that everything is neat and clean, uh, wearing gloves when appropriate. Uh, so those are the ways that we should protect ourselves and, and watching shows like this and learning from educational websites uh, and, and things that are out there to, to just be prepared. You know, because when, when a snowstorm comes, right, like the meteorologist tells you it's going to snow two feet this weekend. Right. You go out. And you get ready for it, right? You go out, you get uh, some food, so on and so forth. But, but sometimes when there's a tornado, you don't have that preparation time. And what we're trying to do right now is just get everybody prepared and get everybody educated on how to protect yourself, how to protect your family, how to, how to control this condition effectively. Right. So the sick don't get sicker. And, and, and as a result, we can help other people get better. Right. Now... 
there's been a, you know a lot of scares and everything like that and people quoting the movie outbreak and everything like that right, now yeah. um when they say the word pandemic what does that exactly mean? Yeah, so so pandemic is it's an important thing. So an epidemic is when there's an outbreak. Like so, China has like an epidemic, right? Right. Like that now the word pandemic means that it has now spread globally, right? Uh, so this virus can. I mean, it's obviously spreading right now. Uh, so it does have pandemic implications. Um, but doing shows like this, just letting our audience know and educating them about how to protect yourself, how to protect others, we can help minimize that growth, right? But pandemic just means that it's spread globally. Right, and you know, the ones that have been really targeted by this so much, it's been the elderly, and the majority of them are over 70 years old. Right. Those where a lot of the deaths yeah, have come from. Yeah, yeah, it's unfortunate, yeah. And uh, you know, they were saying on the CDC website, which you'll see at the end of this program that we'll bring up, um, basically tells you if your kids are sick and they're having flu-like systems, keep them away from grandma and grandpa. Keep yeah. them away from the elderly and stuff like that. Yeah, listen, that should be the case generally, right? right? Like, I mean, I tell all of my patients regardless, like, if you're going to a kid's party, like, kids, there'll be someone there with a virus, there'll be someone there with a common cold. Mm -hmm. uh, try to avoid it if you can, right? If, if you know you're going somewhere and your grandkids or kids are sick, may, maybe go next week, you know? Right. Uh, and right now, with the beauty is with, with our day and time, we have access to social media, FaceTime, right. web, web things. You can still see your loved ones. You right. can still see until you get better. Right. You get better, you go and hang out with them. And, you know, a lot of people understand that if, um, like they were saying this morning on the news, that if you were in, in a room with 20 people, let's say, yeah. and just one of them has the virus, right. and that person touches something, they touch the, the ground, like you were saying, the table, Counters, the, 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 a on glass or yeah. anything like that, they can basically infect the whole room, you know, because you're in an isolated area. There's no right. fresh air. Okay, you're breathing in what they're breathing in. Yeah, you know, you know. Again, it's this incubation period is really important for people to understand. If if you if you feel like someone is not well, or you know, you can excuse yourself, right? Like you don't have to be in an environment where you think you're at risk. Right. And you know, a lot of flights are being canceled. You know, travel restrictions are being implicated. Because we're just doing everything that we can do right. to help minimize everyone's risk. Right. You know? Well, we're going to have updates on this yeah, again great, because great. There, there is a lot of research being done. We were talking about this before yeah. the show. And uh, hopefully we're going to get numbers um, and we'll be doing updates all during the year on this program about the coronavirus um, with uh, Dr. Sanjay Gadwani and maybe with some other doctors also and uh, with some full information from the CDC. Um, we'll have that number up at the end of the program. Uh, if you're not sure, you wanted some more information about this, you go to www.cdc.gov and they will have a whole bunch of information for you. So please stay healthy. Until next time, I'm Larry Mike Rinder. We'll see you soon.